So do you know what WWE likes to do? They like to hire you and change your name. Now we know the reason why they do this is because it comes down to licensing and merchandise. Sometimes it still makes you go, what? However, like all things in life, eventually we get used to them. <laughs> Actually, there's a bunch of dumb ones. But damn it, now makes sense. Let's do it. Number 10, Rey Mysterio Jr. to Rey Mysterio. And this one gets talked about all the time, because when Rey Mysterio Jr. finally did join WWE, Vince McMahon said, well, we're getting rid of that Jr. because Vince McMahon's real name is Vince McMahon Jr. and he doesn't like being called Jr. As we know, that guy is just all kinds of bad. Let's not talk about it. However, there was some sense behind this because the idea was to not call attention to the fact that maybe Rey Mysterio is a small little child, especially giving him stature. So we're just going to pitch him as Rey Mysterio. Most of this came down to his family legacy as well. And really, I suppose it comes down to perception. They also didn't want anybody to think that he was below anybody else in his clan. Or something like that. I mean, Ray is so good, you could have called him Charles Dingbat, and he still would have got on to become one of the best wrestlers ever. But yeah, this one's fine. Number nine, a kid to Axiom. So for a long old while, especially over here in Europe, a kid was a standout superstar. So of course, eventually he got a deal with WWE in 2019, and when he joined NXT, he became Axiom. And everyone went, ha ha, sounds like a robot. He also became the latest masked superstar, but I choose to look at it this way. Whether you like to believe it or not, professional wrestling, especially WWE, is watched by a lot of children. So if you see the now Axiom flying around the ring and the fact he looks like a superhero, actually, I think this is a damn good choice. It really works. It's not like he's been booked badly either. I think this is the real reason fans get worried because again, if somebody is called Radiator Man, <laughs> You're probably going to be like, oh my gosh, they're going to be so hot right now. Shouldn't have said it. Worst thing I've ever said. But when it comes to Axiom, have you seen him down in NXT? This guy is so damn good. And he has such a big upside. When he eventually does get to the main roster, even though he's not a big bad jacked individual, I still think he's totally going to smash it. Number eight, Carlito Caribbean Cool to Carlito. But yes, you probably don't remember this, but when Carlito did debut in 2004, Somebody decided his last and middle name should be Caribbean Cool. The man himself was also told to say this in all promos, as were the commentators. Oh my gosh. It's one of those occasions where they won't just say Carlito, so it's Carlito Caribbean Cool for about 72 times when he is on a match. Eventually, you just want to punch yourself in the face. But if you are going to do that, just call him Triple C, even with obvious comparisons. But thankfully, after a few months, somebody in the creative writing room went, guys, I think this is a bit dumb. Why don't we just call him Carlito? Everyone else went, oh yeah, we should do that. And we did. For some reason, even way back then, there were some fans that were offended by this. But again, let's say it all together. And the brand new heavyweight champion, Carlito Caribbean Cool. Why would you want to put yourself through such an ordeal? Number seven, Eli Drake to LA Knight. So try and think back to where you were in 2021 when Eli Drake did become LA Knight. Everybody freaked out again because they were like, why have we called him after a made up TV show? The thing is though, given how the character was going to develop, I actually think this name worked very well. Although of course, there's a caveat here. Maybe this is why people like it these days. He had to become Max Dupree first. Excuse me, Max Dupree. All of this went so badly, he was going to get fired at one point before there was a big shift to room, and he went back to being LA Knight, which he had been in NXT, which begs the question, why did we put so much time into that in the developmental system if when he was going to come up to the main roster, we were just going to change him again? Now, there is a sad part to this because, of course, it meant the end of the Maximum Male models, and I thought they were brilliant. But these days, LA Knight just works. So it's a massive round of applause for whoever did come up with that one. And again, it passes the test. I can damn well hear that name at WrestleMania. Number six, Biggie Langston to Big E. Now, somewhere between the Royal Rumble and the Elimination Chamber in 2014, the Langston part got thrown by the wayside. The only reason I can't pinpoint it is because in that Rumble, he was definitely called Big E Langston. And this was another one that kind of came at a bad time because it just seemed like the company had a massive hard on, <laughs> shouldn't have said it, for just calling people by their first name. But look, it has been a decade since we've made this change. And does anybody miss that last name now? I don't think so. Big E? Well, it just works. So I thought about this and I figured it out and it probably ties into a lot of these. It's because we as a human race don't like change. I understand that. It's nice and warm and comforted when you are in your routine. But sometimes we have to embrace whatever life is going to throw at us, including just calling someone Big E. 
Also, look at the dude, he is humongous. At least that part always works. Number five, Bronson Rex Steiner to Brom Breaker. And this one does make all the sense in the world because when you sign a Steiner to your company, as WWE did in February 2021, you want that family lineage to live on. <laughs> But the past to be went, no, we ain't gonna do it. Instead, we came up with Bron Breaker, which does sound like it just fell out the pages of Marvel Comics. I don't want to get too much into controversy here, though. But this one, I don't think any of us can argue. Because look, when you do go through the Steiner history, well, even up to 2023, it is quite controversial. So why the flub would you want to tie that in? And it's not like this has affected anything because we all know where he came from. And if you don't know, it's probably because you don't even know who the Steiners are. So who is this hurting? Also, Brock Breaker is so damn good. Once again, you could call him Pete McGee and he's still gonna be a future world champion. He hits the ropes so damn fast. I can't wait for him to be permanent on the main roster. He is gonna be so damn great. Number four, Nick Nemeth to Dolph Ziggler. Now, I actually think you can argue with this one. When you go and listen to the interviews that Dolph Ziggler slash Nick Nemeth did when he left the WWE, he explained the origins of this and how he was perplexed. Because originally, he was meant to be like David Dougler or something. And when he asked about this, creative said, yeah, we just need a name that kind of sounds the same, both in the first and the last part. It was like, my name is Nick Nemeth. It literally does that. Instead, we came up with Dolph Ziggler just because it was totally random and poor Dolph would have to go around and shake everybody's hand. And I don't think this was a benefit at all. And the only reason we did all come around to the idea is one, it was around for so long, but also two, the real life Nick Nemeth was so damn good, he proved what I've been saying this entire video. You can come up with any moniker you want, and if the person using it does have the skill, everything will be all right. Even then though, even if we had gone with Nick Nemeth, I don't think WWE would have ever given him what he did deserve. Again, it's all there, there on Google. But ever since he has returned using his real life name, well, go look at some of the YouTube views that he's done. It's not like people are surprised by this. And this is definitely one for the comments. Number three, Paul White to the big show. Or the giant, I suppose. You could use his WCW name. But really, when you call someone the big show, everyone's gonna know what you're getting at. And Paul White is a fine name. There's nothing wrong with Paul White, but it just means if you are a fan, you have to take that extra step before you go. Well, who the hell is that, Huss? But once more, if you're called the big show or very large man, you've done the work for him. If you do transport yourself back to 1999 though, people went totally bonkers about this. And actually I understand. Because the first time you heard the big show, especially the theme tune, whoa, I'm the big show. You're like, what world are we living in? What's a big show? It's been this way for over 20 years though, and now we even do accept it, to the point he's in AEW as Paul White. And what does everybody call him? You can figure it out. Number two, Prince Devitt to Finn Balor. So once again, if you are a hardcore New Japan fan and you have invested all your time and money into Prince Devitt, and then he arrives in WWE as Finn Balor, you're gonna be like, man, why do they do this to me every single time? There's also a bit of a meltdown because WWE came up with this just because it tied into Irish mythology. I mean, you can just imagine it. It was also during a period where Vince McMahon was just Vince McMahonifying everything. But actually now, as we do stand here in 2024, I think Finn Balor is a pretty badass wrestling name. Now, a lot of this does come down to the fact that he is so damn talented and in many ways still vastly underrated. But that's kind of the point. He went and made it work. Also, his real name is Fergal Devitt. So this way he can be completely separated from the two. And imagine he does leave WWE one day and he goes back to AEW. Well, not back to AEW, but back to the indie scene. And he goes back to Devitt. I think a lot of people will scratch their heads and they'll probably think that's the made up name. But it totally isn't. One Volta. To Gunther. So you just knew that this was going to be number one. And I do want to point out, if we had gone with what WWE originally wanted to do, I would have been genuinely offended. I'm not going to talk about it here, but once again, Google is your friend. Thankfully, even WWE realized this. And in January 2022, Gunther did announce to the world that he was now Gunther. So we've basically had it for a couple of years. There's just something about it. But I don't know. I think Walter probably would have been fine as well. But when it comes to the G, man, I'm a big fan. That rhymes, so it must be true. You do have to bring in the fact that he did go on to become the longest reigning intercontinental champion ever. I'm just gonna do it one more time as the video is about to end. You could call him Larry Lamppost, but if he can walk out with that championship and go, man, I've held this for over a year and nobody can beat me, you're gonna be like, damn, Lar, you're really amazing. What's even cooler is that he is absolutely gonna ride this name to the top of the industry. 
hopefully that will be a lesson for us all. Make sure you're not boxed in just because somebody does give you a silly name because you can still go on to achieve the greatest of all things. Now make sure you change tact entirely and watch 10 heartbreaking WWE moments that did make you cry because who wants any happiness in their life? Like the video, share the video and subscribe. And there's the comments down there. You're going to be screaming about some of what I've said. Just get out all your anger in the writing section and move on to something else. Sound good? Great. Goodbye.